Hello, MGTOW. Hello, men. This is Howard Dare. Thanks for stopping by. So, I want to ask the question, are women ever sorry? Because my experience suggests that it's very, very rare. And the idea of the collective of women being sorry, I've never seen it. I've never seen women accept responsibility for their position in the world. But before I get into it, let me say thank you to everybody who's been stopping by, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing, even donating. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, click on the subscribe button, click on the bell symbol next to it, and accept the email notifications. It'll help me grow my channel, and I'd really appreciate it. Now, let's get into it. Are women ever sorry? And we're going to come at this from two angles, from the individual woman and from women as a group, as a collective, because the individual man is dealing with the animosity of the group of the collective. And you know this is true. You know that all of the ills of the world have been heaped upon the native-born man of Western civilization. In other words, you as an individual 10-year-old boy, you've been oppressing women for thousands of years, and you are potentially another Attila the Hun. It's, it's unbelievable, you know what I mean? The idea that a woman born in another country is going to come here and be abusive towards a young man in this country while living off of his parents' tax dollars and the very values that are being used to raise the individual you know, young man. And that they're going to denigrate and attack those values while reaping the freedoms, the benefits, and uh, the security of those values. So this is not some trivial sort of issue. This is a serious issue. The idea that the men are held in contempt. It's not the men. It's all of the values of the civilization um, that are being denigrated and cast down. That's why it hurts. That's why it's so frustrating for the honorable man to, you know, look at feminism, to look at the modern left. Now, what we're talking about, and this, this is a recurring theme throughout the Howard Dare videos. I hope you're starting to see that. I hope you're starting to recognize the theme song of what's going on here, okay? The recurring uh, instances and uh, behaviors of this situation. So what's going on here is entitlement, weakness, playing the victim, and the individual woman is able to use these tools. In other words, if you get a bad grade, it's because you didn't study hard enough. But if she gets a bad grade, it's because the system is set up against women. So imagine going through your whole life, right, making the full set of mistakes that everybody has to make, right? <laughs> like, like you're going to overeat from time to time and you're going to oversleep and you're not going to be prepared and you're going to be undisciplined. All of the problems that a person has in life, okay? The internal weaknesses that they have to overcome in order to be productive and to be happy in life. So all of them are no longer, they're no longer your responsibility, right? <laughs> You're overweight. Ah, well, it's because the men were being abusive to you. It's like, ah, you can't get a good paying job. Well, that's because they're oppressing you. <laughs> you get fired from the jobs that you're at. Well, that's because they're being unfair to you. Just, just everything. Like you can't get the relationships you want. Well, that's because the whole social situation is treating you unfairly. At no point is the individual woman stepping up and saying, you know what? Maybe the reason why I'm so fat is because I won't stop eating. Maybe the reason why, you know, I have no strong relationships is because I'm an emotional basket case that just bounces all over the place and jumps, you know, from branch to branch. And nobody with any sort of discipline wants to hang around me. So she's never going to say that, right? Like, I mean, look at the, the reason why the Democrats lost the election, right? Russian collusion. No, your candidate stunk. She wouldn't even get up and go to a single event every day. And when she did, it was, you know, it was torturous. It was painful to watch, you know, and it was just this endless series of excuses. Do you realize that the moment you make an excuse for a situation, the minute you blame someone other than yourself, you've just effectively robbed yourself of all agency in the situation. So again, I'm saying to you, imagine someone going through their whole life without any agency, right? It's like, oh, you know, so... You know it's true. Moment to moment, day by day, the woman is going through her daily events, the events of her life, and she's not taking responsibility for them. Now, some of you younger guys, some of you um, 
people maybe, you know, not too much experience in life, you'd think, oh, that's great, right? It's like, it's never your fault. Yeah, never your fault, never your responsibility, and never your growth, never your ability to overcome those circumstances. So I hope you recognize that this isn't just a female thing, but it is a kind of weakness and dependent thing. So the young men, they adopt these values as well. You know, and from their point of view, from an egocentric point of view, it all it all makes sense. I mean, it really does look like the whole world is revolving around you. Not because it is, but simply because you're observing it from your point of view. So it looks like it's all happening around you, but it's not. And that's a hard thing to learn in life. And some people never, ever want to learn it. Because, you know, the way you learn it is through being ineffective in life, right? By, by making mistakes and things just not going your way. And even, like, doing everything that you can to make them go your way, and they still don't go your way. And it's like, hey, wait a minute, what the hell, what's going on here? And it's like, oh, universe doesn't really care about me. <laughs> universe isn't really keeping score and trying to, you know, develop a balance sheet with me. It's just not doing that. Neither are the other people. This is a hell of a realization. And you can understand how a person would go from childhood into young adulthood, and they just wouldn't get it. And then you could see how this attitude of not taking responsibility, of not having any agency, of it nothing ever being your fault, and someone else is always to blame. You can see how you know this will undermine the strength and the character and the viability and the integrity of the individual. This is why to see a strong, healthy person going about their activities, it, it's it's a stunning thing to see. You know what I mean? It, it's quite it's quite beautiful. It's quite attractive. But to see the fault finding, the victim playing, the emotionally distraught individual with all their problems, you know, moving about and interacting with them, it's toxic. You have to actually be able to recognize these types of individuals and separate yourself from them. Because eventually, you know, they're going to burn down, they're, they're going to tear down the business. They're going to tear down the enterprise, right? They're going to come up short in the situation, and then they're going to start blaming people. And then they have to demonize people. You know, this is your Trump derangement syndrome. Amazing, right? Like people stepping forward and saying, he's an idiot. He doesn't know anything. He's the least qualified person we've ever had. We should have Hillary Clinton. It's like, what? This man has made billions of dollars. This man has raised skyscrapers around the world. This man has been involved in more high-end negotiations than Hillary Clinton, Barack Obama, and the entire Democratic Party combined. He beats them on every level with one-tenth of the resources. And it's like, oh, this guy's an idiot. It's like, no. The other people were the idiots. And if you don't open up and see it, you're the idiot. So this is the derangement that the women and the weak men and the people who want to be part of the collective, the people who won't take responsibility for their destiny in life. It's it's horrible to deal with the, the man and the young man who's trying to like blame other people. I've got a group of guys doing that with me right now in MGTOW, right? They're the true MGTOW, but they don't produce any content that anybody watches. They chase people out of, you know, the manosphere because they're not true MGTOW. And these guys, you know, the only thing these guys ever did was hang around the Howard Dare channel and a few other MGTOW channels. That's, that's their accomplishment. So I'll tell you this, okay? On an individual basis, I have seen women be sorry. I have seen women look at their life and say, I've got a bunch of cats. I've got this piece of property that I take really good care of, you know, that I pay other people to take care of it, but I don't do anything with it. You see the destruction that they can bring into their lives. You know what I mean? When somebody's not on their game, they overeat. They they indulge, you know, in, in activity that's not good for them. They're not on the ball. They don't take care of things. They abuse the people around them. And so I've seen the individuals like bemoan their circumstance. Right? So, so you see, it's actually a trick. They're not really sorry. They are complaining. They are playing the victim even more. So I guess I haven't even seen them being sorry on an individual basis. The weak men do this as well. The feminized, you know, leftist men, they do this as well and understand what it is. You know, they're part of the group. They're not individually, value, you know, productive. So it's all about the rules of the group, who said what, who did what, how someone feels. It's a terrible way for a man to exist. It really is. It's a terrible way for a healthy person to exist. Trapped in your emotions, trapped in the uh, interpersonal interactions of individuals that have no productive value. It's like, uh, you're wasting my time. It's like talking on the phone to somebody who's not got anything to say. Stop doing it. Go, go do your work. So I've seen them like express this kind of, 
<laughs> attitude of, oh, I should have been nicer to him because I could have gotten more money from him. So they're not really sorry. You know, it's like, oh, I should have behaved differently and my circumstance would be better. You see what I mean? So it's kind of like they're sorry. They regret <laughs> some of the things they did, but they don't take responsibility. So it's more victim playing. Well, it seems that I've bitten off a little bit more than I can chew. So I'm going to have to leave the question for whether or not women are sorry for how they've behaved collectively for another video. But let me know what you think about this in the comments section below. And please like, share, comment, subscribe, donate. And join me again, Howard Dare, as I plan to have more content for you. Thank you, MGTOW.